This is Oral Roberts. I welcome you to the healing scriptures. As a man of God's healing power, called to take his healing power to my generation, I'm very aware this includes you, also your dear loved ones, for your healing, for their healing, and for it to begin this very hour. I'm reading these powerful anointed healing scriptures with the, with the anointing of God that I feel throughout my whole being. I believe something good is going to happen to you through God's healing power, touching every area of your life as you hear these healing scriptures. My dear son Richard and I are both healing evangelists, and we've been having a miracle explosion through our prayers for the healing of the sick. We believe that as you hear this tape today, and you hear it over and over and over, that God's healing power is going to touch you at the point of your need and in every area of your life. So as Richard and I begin to read these precious healing scriptures to you, set yourself in agreement with us. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus said for us to come into agreement as touching anything on this earth. And when we come into agreement and we ask, then the Father will do it. Thank God. This is Richard Roberts, and I join my dad today. I feel that same anointing upon me now. I believe God is about to do great things in your life through these healing scriptures in His Word. The Word of God is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 Psalms 107.20 says, He sent His Word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Romans 10:17 reminds us, So then faith cometh by hearing. Hear that word, by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In Matthew 8, the Roman army captain said to Jesus, Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And his servant was healed in that very hour. And now I ask you to make this confession of, of healing faith with me. Ready? Heavenly Father, I come to you not in my name, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth concerning healing. I believe and I say that your word will not return void or empty, but will accomplish whatsoever you say it will. Therefore, I believe from my heart that I'm being healed as I hear the word of God read to me by Oral and Richard. Father, in Matthew 8, 17, you wrote in your word, of your son Jesus himself who said that he took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses and my friend that includes yours and mine therefore with great boldness and expectation I say on the authority of the written and spoken word of God that I am being healed I'm the healed of the Lord and I look directly to you Lord for my full and complete deliverance in every area of my life and need. And now, Father, because I believe your holy word, because I believe your angels surround me day and night, because that Jesus is closer to me than my breath, this is my hour to expect my miracle and every miracle from you that I need. And I confess this by my faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And now I'm happy to come into an agreement with my dad and with you in this confession of faith that you've just made. And friend, we will not come out of the agreement. I believe you won't come out of the agreement either because I believe victory, that's right, victory is on the way. The Word of God says in Mark 5, 25 through 34, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, notice she said, she did something with her mouth. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. 
And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press of people and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. It is taught by the Jewish historians that Jesus, as a rabbi, wore a certain type of prayer shawl outside his outer garment of clothing. That prayer shawl represented the law of Moses, which was the word of God. I believe and have preached that that little woman knew as a Jew, that Jesus was a Jew, and that that prayer shawl represented the law of Moses. It had tassels at the base. I believe what she was saying was, he doesn't have to touch me, I don't have to touch him. If I can just get my hands on those tassels, which represents the law of Moses or the word of God, or in other words, if I can just get my hands on the word of God, I know I shall be healed. Friend, listen to that. If I can just get my hands on the word of God, and friend, it's true today. If you and I can get our hands upon the word of God, by faith, we can be healed. In Acts 14, verses 8 through 10, it says, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. You see, just as this little woman acted on her faith that Richard mentioned, and her faith brought Jesus healing into her body, so this crippled man in Acts 14, as he listened to Paul preach the gospel, acted upon his faith, even while sitting there listening as the apostle gave the word of God. And when Paul saw his faith, he called to him to stand on his feet, and he stood. I say to you, as you hear the word of God, as you hear it read to you, turn your faith loose to the Lord. And if Satan tries to tempt you to believe that you have no faith, remember in Romans 12, 3, the apostle Paul said, God has given to every man the measure of faith. Therefore, we know that faith in your heart is not something you have to get. Faith is something you have already this very hour. In Matthew 8, 14 and 15, And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Peter's mother-in-law had such a high fever that she could not even rise up from the bed and help her daughter cook a meal for Jesus. And Jesus saw her. Isn't it great to know that Jesus sees you? He knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He felt her illness, and he was moved by it. The compassion flowed up within him, and he went to her bedside. The master, Jesus, touched her hand. And the Bible says the fever left. Glory to God. And she rose up, and she ministered unto Jesus and Peter. We serve that same Jesus today. He's close, friend. He's oh so close to us in our sicknesses and in our hurts and in our diseases and in our ills and in those things that are wrong in our lives. And he's putting forth his hand to touch you right now. One of the healing scriptures I have preached around the world and throughout America and with great healing results is in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. 
For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. To another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, or the Roman army captain, You go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the same hour. I love the 8th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. It may be the greatest healing chapter in the Bible. Notice right after the healing of the centurion's servant of a grievous disease, in verse 17 we're told that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Psalm 103, verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, how I love that bird, the eagle. It's our national bird, the symbol of the strength and power of the United States of America. All throughout the Bible there is the mention of that bird, the eagle. For the eagle symbolizes such strength and majesty, that strong, wide wingspan. I love the eagle, and I thank God for eagles who stretch their wings and soar out over their prey. They have both telescopic and microscopic vision, and they're able to see great distances and yet see up very, very close. Thank God for the eagle, which can renew its own strength, and thank God that, that his word uses the eagle as a symbol that you and I can renew our strength like the eagle renews its strength. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23-24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Notice in this scripture, that Jesus did three things. First, he preached. He preached. Second, he taught. He taught. And third, he healed. He healed. He preached, he taught, and he healed. That's what Jesus did while he was on this earth as our Savior. And that's what he is doing today through those who believe as we preach and teach and heal and leave nothing out. John 5, 1 through 9. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Sir, do you want to be well? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. I've always been fascinated with this scripture, how Jesus cut through the man's excuses of blaming it on others, on waiting on someone else to do what he could have done for himself. And Jesus simply cut through all of that and said, Rise, 
He was saying, rise up on the inside. Tell your inner man it's time to stand up. Take up your bed. In other words, my dear friend, that bed has been carrying you. It's time for you to pick up the bed and carry it and re-enter humanity. Walk, re-enter the human stream of life. Thank God that Jesus' word to us is a positive word. It's not a negative word. Jesus always lifts you up. He doesn't put you down. Jesus gives you always a positive word. In fact, that's the way you can tell the difference between the voice of Jesus, the master, and the voice of Satan, the devil. Jesus always gives you an encouraging word. You can do it. You can do it. And that's what Jesus was saying to this man. Sir, rise up on the inside into newness of life. Take up your bed, that thing which has carried you. Pick it up, whatever it is, if it's spiritual, if it's physical, if it's financial, if it's emotional, if it's in your family, if it's in your marriage, rise up on the inside and believe that God can work a miracle, that God has not gone out of the healing miracle business and that he has a healing miracle for you. Rise up on the inside. Take up that which has carried you. Carry it. Walk and re-enter the stream of humanity. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, The thief or the devil cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Luke 9.56, For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Luke 8, 41 through 55. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee, and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, Be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. In Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, Jesus said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents or enemies, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These four things are for every believer. Mark chapter 5 verses 14, 15. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and saw him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. You know, some people ignore this scripture. They say the age of miracles is over and that the age of miracles ceased when the last of the 12 apostles of the early church in the first century died. Don't you believe it? If miracles were supposed to stop when the last apostle 
Why did the Apostle James in his great book, the fifth chapter, James, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, command, Is there any sick among you? If there is, let the sick person call for the elders or leaders of the church and have them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Notice this powerful healing scripture reminds us that healing often brings forgiveness also. Exodus 15, 26. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Thank God for the cross. Thank God that Jesus not only shed his blood for the remission of sin, but thank God he took the stripes on his back that we might be healed from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Let the world hear it. Jesus has not gone out of the healing business. He took those stripes on his back that you might be healed of every satanic attack that the devil would try to put on you. Oh, friend, let those words sink into your heart. Jesus took the stripes on his back for your healing. In Luke 4, 38, 39, And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Luke 4, 40, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diver diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. This is an example of the laying on of the hands. I, Earl Roberts, have laid my hands on more than one and a half million sick people throughout America and 70 nations. And I've seen God heal people by the tens of thousands. And I know that our Savior is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's here to heal you now. Luke 6, 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue or healing power out of him and healed them all. Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 25, 3. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalm 57, 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Psalm 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Thank God for parents who taught me to trust in the Lord. Even though there was a time in my youth when I ran away from God, when I ran away from home, when I finally came to myself, like that boy in the Bible who ran away from home with his inheritance, he finally came to himself. There was a time when I came to myself. And once again, those scriptures, that trust in the Lord that my parents had poured into me came flooding up into my heart. And I came to a moment in my life when I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I thank God that today I'm trusting not in things, not in riches, but I'm trusting in God. And one more thing, I want to remind you that God did not give you that spirit of fear, but instead the Bible says he gave you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Never forget that that fear that has tried to attach itself to you is not from God. So therefore today I join you in rebuking it. I command that spirit of fear to leave you and for you to be delivered for the rest of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Mark chapter 11 verses 22, 24. And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Matthew 13.58 And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Hear this, even Jesus in person could not perform miracles when people deliberately doubted and refused to believe. Psalms 91, verses 1-7. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the hour that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Psalms 91, 11, For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 91, 14, 16, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. Notice he said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Acts 10.34 Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Hear this, my friend. God is not a respecter of persons. Not of you, not of me, not of anyone. It matters not who you are or what you've been through. God will hear your prayer. Thank God for it. He still heals all types of sickness, disease, fear, doubt, dread, discouragement, disillusionment. It matters not who you are. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll still heal you if you'll trust in his name. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. John 3, 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Exodus 23, 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Psalms 118, 6, 7. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Proverbs 12:18. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. First Corinthians 14, verses 13, 15, the Apostle Paul said, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding or my mind is unfruitful. What is it then? What will I do? I will pray with the spirit or in tongues, and I'll pray with the understanding also. That's with my mind. And I'll sing with the spirit or in tongues, and I'll sing with the understanding also. Ephesians six eighteen, Praying always in the spirit or in tongues. Jude 20. But ye 
beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, and then asking God through prayer to let you interpret back to your mind what you said to God in tongues, and then listening. Listening for God to give you the interpretation back to your mind, to give you the understanding of what you said to him or what he is saying back to you. And then you pray in the understanding. I practice this every day of my life, and I know it brings great release of healing. It'll do the same for you. Acts 3, 2 through 8. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. This has been a scripture that has fascinated me all of my life. How Peter reached out his hand and took hold of that lame man, saying, such as I have. In other words, here is what I have, for money is not what you need. What you need is the most powerful force upon the face of the earth, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So in his name, receive your healing. Whenever my father, Oral Roberts, or whenever I, as an evangelist in the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, pray the prayer of faith, we always say, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise into newness of life. We stretch out our faith hands to pray and to believe and to help lift you out of despair, to help lift you out of sickness and disease and fear and doubt and dread and demonic activity, not in our name, but in the name of the most powerful force upon the earth, in whose name is above every name named in heaven and earth, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank God Peter put out his hand and said, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man leaped and rejoiced and praised God and went to church with them. Matthew 8, 1, 3. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew 17, 16 through 20. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto him, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Notice Jesus said, Because of your unbelief. For if you have faith as a seed, as a seed of your faith, you shall speak to this mountain, you shall say to it, you remove to yonder place, and it'll remove. And then Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Mark 10, 46 through 52. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Notice that the cry of faith stopped Jesus in his tracks. He said, Bring the man to me. And those who had told him to shut up suddenly now were so glad to bring him to Jesus. I want you to center in on the cry of faith. I remember when Lindsay was once crying over the sickness of one of our children. And the Lord spoke to her and said, It's all right to cry as long as you cry out for miracles. Bartimaeus was crying for a miracle. Thank God he arrested the attention of Jesus. And friend, your cry of faith will arrest the attention of Jesus. It arrested the attention of Jesus that night when I had to rush to the hospital with our little girl, but by the time I got there, she had been completely healed by the power of God. I believe it started because of the cry of faith that came out of my wife, Lindsay. And friend, I believe that your cry of faith to God will help get you into position to receive the deliverance that you need. Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Matthew 8, 2, 3. And behold, there came a leper worshiping him and saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Luke 9, 1 and 2 Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Listen to those words. He sent his disciples to preach teach and heal. Oh, let the world hear it today. Jesus is still in the preaching, teaching, healing ministry. Notice that he gave his disciples authority, power over all devils, over all sickness and disease. Thank God that we as believers have authority over sickness and disease. And when we speak in the authority of Jesus' name, we have a Bible right to believe for those things to leave. And now, I want every person listening to this tape on the Healing Scriptures to hear this. The Abundant Life Prayer Group, taking telephone calls from people all over the world, they're anointed by the, by the Lord to take your phone calls and to hear your re prayer requests and pray for you. Call 918-495-7777. That's 918-495-7777. And we'll do two things. First, we'll pray for you and expect a miracle to happen. And second, we will add your name to the list of people we fast and pray over. Jesus says in Matthew 17, 21, This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. I, Oral Roberts, began this healing ministry in 1947 by much fasting, along with much prayer. And I and my son Richard and my associates in the Abundant Life Prayer Group continue at times to add fasting to our prayers. That's right, Dad. And right now I feel a tremendous urgency in my heart for prayer. Thank God for the prayer of faith. For the Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise you up. I'm believing that as I pray and then as my dad adds his word of prayer, and as this tape closes, that the faith which is in your heart is going to come leaping up into your mouth. 
and that it is going to become a word of faith to you. For the word that God places in your heart is not supposed to stay there alone. It is supposed to come up out of your being, out of the abundance of your heart, the Bible says, the mouth speaks. So therefore, let that word, this word that we've been pouring into you through this tape, come up out of your heart and into your mouth. Let it become a word of faith. So that as my father and I pray and believe God for a miracle, that you will release your faith and expect that miracle to come to pass. Father, I come to you not in my name and certainly not in my strength, but in the authority of the name of Jesus, whose name is above every name named in heaven and earth. Satan, I put you on alert. I adjure you, I command you by the name of Jesus Christ to take your hands off of God's property. You turn this man loose. You turn this woman loose. You set this young person free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Father, through faith in your son Jesus' name, I'm asking you to move in on the scene. I'm asking you to heal, to save, to deliver, and to set the people free from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, I'm trusting in you, the source of my total being. I'm believing and I'm expecting you to do it. Now, Lord, let the faith that is in each one of us go rising up, come flooding up within us in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Friend, I pray it, I believe it in his mighty name. And now I close this tape by praying for you, for praying for you yourself in your needs, your illnesses, the things that come against your precious life. I come not in my name, but in the mighty and comparable name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I come asking you to rebuke this sickness, this disease, this torment, this wrong, this evil of Satan. I ask you to cast out Satan's power casting away all of his oppression to torment. And Satan, I adjure you by Jesus. You loose this person. You let them go free by the power of the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, my friend, I feel the anointing. I feel the healing power all over me. I feel it coming through my right hand. And I believe, I believe, I believe. And you believe with me. I believe that God's healing power is entering your body, setting you free, making you clean. That is to say, making you a new creation in Jesus Christ, healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I believe it, and together I receive it with you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, amen and amen.